The Queen Mary II is the largest ocean liner ever. Her transatlantic crossings occur for most of the year. She is not a cruise ship, but rather an ocean liner. What is the difference between a cruise ship and an ocean liner? Well, a cruise ship is constructed to sail in the warmer southern waters. These large ships have many open areas for passengers to enjoy the weather. On the other hand, an ocean liner has more closed-in construction due to the need for protection from the northern Atlantic Ocean's inhospitable climates. An ocean liner must be built to take the punishment of the North Atlantic as well as its weather conditions. The cruise ship may have frequent stops throughout the voyage allowing the passengers to regularly disembark, whereas an ocean liner is more about the voyage itself, consisting of nearly six days to cross from New York to Southampton. Passengers aboard an ocean liner have more time to enjoy the ship herself as well as what it may offer. The Queen Mary II was ordered by the parent company Carnival in 2003. Although the QU2 is operated and owned by the Cunard line, Carnival is the parent company. The RMS Queen Mary II is designated as a Royal Mail ship. This designation comes from the British Postal Service. Her MMSI number is 3106270000 and her IMO number is 9241061. The ship was designed by Stephen Payne, who also served in her construction. The RMS Queen Mary II was built in Chantier de l'Atlantique, which is a shipyard in Saint Nazaire, France. Her keel was laid down on July 4, 2002, with her hull number being G32. Using maritime tradition, two coins, one French and one English, were placed in the keel for good luck. It would take 1 million man hours to design the great vessel and another 8 million man hours to construct her. Approximately 20,000 workers would finish her construction to ready her for her maiden voyage in January of 2004. Construction of modern day ocean liners is quite different from the ocean liners of the past. For instance, the RMS Titanic had her keel laid down, then the ribs were added and the ship was built up and held together with rivets. Ships of today are put together in block sections and then welded together. Queen Mary II's hull consists of 94 blocks, or 580 panels. It would take 20,000 liters of paint to paint her immense hull. The ship would be launched on March 21, 2003. After her fitting out, her sea trials would begin on September 25, 2003 and run through the 29th, then from November 7th to the 11th. On a tragic side note, family members that were shown the ship on November 15th, 2003, an accident occurred when a gangway ended up falling while people were attempting to board the ship. This caused many to fall to their deaths 45 feet to the concrete floor below. With more than 30 people injured, 15 people died as a result of this accident. The ship would be finished and delivered to the Cunard Line on December 26, 2003. She is a merchant marine vessel, and when the captain is a Royal Naval officer, she flies the blue British flag. The ship is 1,132 feet long and 236 feet 2 inches high. Her draft is 33 feet, and she is 135 feet wide. The Queen Mary II's gross tonnage is 148,530 gross tons. The ship's passenger capacity is 2,620 people. Her crew capacity is 1,254 people. She has a total of 17 decks, 14 designated for the passengers. The ship's exterior deck space is 152,420 square feet. It features 1,296 total passenger cabins. Of those, 173 suites, 953 balconies, 64 outside, 279 inside, 
and 32 accessible. Her top speed is 30 knots with an average cruising speed of 24 knots. The mighty ship is propelled by two gas turbines, four diesel engines, four propeller pods, two that are fixed and two that are azimuthing, three thrusters and two sets of stabilizers that would extend 20 feet from the hull. In total, she generates a staggering 157,000 horsepower. She was the first passenger liner featuring the IEP propulsion, integrated electric propulsion. Queen Mary II features a power plant of Kodeg type, which is combined diesel, electric, and gas turbine power plants. For a transatlantic crossing, the ship will consume 1,850 tons of diesel oil and 1,000 tons of gas for the turbines. It takes a total of six hours to fill her huge fuel tanks. The ship's hull plating is thicker. This is caused by the sailing, in particular, to the northern Atlantic Ocean. Her funnel size is 44 feet high and 22 feet wide. The total cost for the Queen Mary II was $900 million. Her maiden voyage was January 12th through the 26th of 2004, when she sailed from Southampton to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Her captain was Commodore Ronald Warwick at the time. Currently, her captain is Commodore Christopher Rind. Born in 2004, the Queen Mary II's lifespan should run well into 2044. Her passenger rooms categories range from econ economy, inside staterooms with no view, to luxury suites with huge private balconies, marble bathrooms, and a butler. The suite prices may soar up to $4,000 a night. She also has 10 restaurants, dining options, 14 bars and lounges, disco, casino, impressive number of five swimming pools, one with a retractable dome, eight whirlpools, spa, the world's largest floating ballroom, the biggest library at sea as well with 8,000 hardback, 500 paperback and 200 audio books. Also a huge Broadway style theater, a 3D cinema with the only floating planetarium in the world. And at 1,132 feet long, the ship is 113 feet longer than the RMS Queen Mary, the ship she was named after. In 2011, the ship would be refurbished from November 28th through December 8th in dry dock. This was in preparation of her eighth anniversary in 2012. The Queen Mary II also boasts of 565 original works of art that is displayed for the public to enjoy. These works of art range from paintings to sculptures and just about everything in between. Works of art are also in the cabins, suites, apartments, and corridors. 200 graphic art pieces and 3,400 reproductions were made by Enterprise and Art. And all 128 artists from 16 countries made the contributions. The Queen Mary II also has an 11 bed sick bay equipped with an x-ray machine and modern labs. She is a floating hospital. She also has a central computer network as well as two satellite antennas to secure communications from anywhere on the planet. The ship also can create a supply of fresh water used for drinking, cooking, and bathing needs. Water from the ocean is drawn into the middle of the ship's hull. Then it is pumped into three low pressure flash evaporator units. Heat from the engines evaporates the seawater and the steam condenses and is pumped into storage tanks. She can create up to 2 million liters of fresh water daily. The ship's garbage and waste is also high tech procedure. All garbage that can be shredded and burned go into a 1000 degree incinerator. Ash is collected and deposited at port along with the waste that cannot be incinerated. Wastewater from toilets and sick bay are stored in buffer tanks. Bacteria are added to break down the waste. Then it is filtered and discharged back into the ocean. This water is called black water. Wastewater from the sinks, however, in showers is called gray water. 
This water is collected, treated, and stored as technical water, and this can be used for washing the decks and fire control. Speaking of fire control, the ship is divided into nine fire zones. When smoke is detected in any one of them, that zone is evacuated, fire doors are closed by remote control, and the area is sealed. Air is sucked out by the ventilation systems. Then a superfine mist of water is pumped through the network of special nozzles to help extinguish the fire. The Queen Mary II features two whistles. They are attached to the funnel and are seven feet high. They can be heard up to 10 miles away. The starboard one is the exact replica, as is on the RMS Queen Mary. She also has three anchors. Each one weighs in at 23 tons and have breaking force of 9,300 kilonewtons. She also features an illuminated name sign near her funnel. It is the largest ever, measuring 72 feet high by 8 feet wide. And with her lifespan running into 2044 and possibly beyond, we can expect this magnificent ship to make many more transatlantic crossings.